from the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's Broadcast and Digital Network at Troy, Alabama's International University. This is Troy Trojan Vision News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision News for December 5th, 2017. I'm Kwana Clark. And I'm Sarah Singletary. Thank you for joining us this evening. There will be a major change in the McKinley Road construction project starting this Monday as one half of McKinley Drive will open and another will close until April. McKinley Drive from the roundabout east to the Trojan Arena entrance will be reopened on Monday. Trojan Arena traffic will be able to access the Trojan Arena entrance from the roundabout or Luther Drive end of McKinley Drive. Also starting Monday, McKinley Drive from George Wallace Drive to the Trojan Arena entrance will be closed and no traffic will be permitted on this section of McKinley Drive. The construction project is anticipated to last until April 30th, 2018, weather permitting. Motorists that disregard the road closed and do not enter signs are subject to a fine. Today marks the last day of classes for Troy University's fall semester. And for some, that means a holiday break, but for others, it means the end of their collegiate career. Seth Hawk hit the campus to talk to students about the end of the semester and what it means to them. Before the storm at Troy University, as the end of the fall semester is drawing to a close, and with the end of the semester comes excitement, stress, and everything in between. But some students are already thinking ahead to next semester. I'm a nursing major, so I'm going to be taking a lot of nursing classes. I have some education classes that I'm going to take, some education major, so basically just education classes. English, a little bit hard. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get math so I can knock math out the way because I'm done with everything else. and work on taking my uh, classes for my major. But before students can worry about next semester, they have to worry about one thing, one obstacle that stands in their way, finals week. Probably going to pull some all-nighters. That's really all I can do. I have three finals on Friday, so I'm going to have to pull all-nighters on Thursday. So I'm definitely not going to pull any all-nighters. Um, I hate that. I've done enough of those, so I'm done with that. I'm about to stay in the library all day, <laughs> so just I'm going to pray a lot. There is something for students to look forward to after finals, as students will be let out of school for Christmas break. Spend time with my family. I got a, I got a, my cousin's birthday coming around New Year, so probably go hang out with him. I'm um, spending time with family. That's what I'm most excited about. Just hang out with my family. I'm from here, so I'm not going to really like go anywhere, but I'll just be with my family. Troy University students will officially begin spring classes on January 10th, 2018. So until then, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Seth Hawk, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Fall commencement for the Troy campus will be Friday, December 15th at 10 a.m. in Trojan Arena. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, especially in downtown Troy, where the holiday season kicked off with a parade and tree lighting on the square. Nathaniel Rodriguez gives us a look. The city of Troy kicked off the Christmas season Monday night with the annual Christmas parade. Residents lined the streets of the downtown square to see the various floats created by local businesses and organizations. I think we had more people be able to get out here in time and uh, so we were excited about the size of the crowd. They had a Polar Express float that was really neat and uh, we had more entrance than we'd ever had. And uh, you know, one of the things that's really exciting for us is that the Troy University Sound of the South can be in this parade. After the parade, Troy residents returned to the square for the lighting of the town Christmas tree, which was performed by Reeves and some local children. Instead of me just standing up there and flipping a switch, we have five kids from local schools come and they help and, and they always get a big kick out of that. They get to ride in the parade uh, and then they get to light the tree. And so that's a, a neat, neat thing. Several parade goers said events like the parade help people bond with one another during the Christmas season. You know, it's just a good thing to, to, to allow the community to come together, uh, you know, in the spirit of Christmas and, and everybody seems to, uh, to really enjoy that and, and it builds community. As a college student, it's really fun to come out and participate in some of the community events, so it kind of makes me feel more welcome into the city. But even though the parade has ended, the downtown festivities will continue throughout December, with the next event being Christmas carols on the square on Saturday. Nathaniel Rodriguez, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Troy University's official Christmas tree will be lit Thursday night following the Sounds of the Season concert. The concert is set to begin at 7.30 p.m. in Claudia Crosby Theater. The Rosa Parks Museum on Troy's Montgomery campus has a new exhibit on display. It highlights a victory for African Americans during the time of segregation. Justin Walker has the details from our Montgomery News Bureau. 
A new exhibit is now open at the Rosa Parks Museum in Montgomery, commemorating a time that marked a victory for African Americans. The executive order is named after President Harry S. Truman's Executive Order 9981, which ended segregation in the United States Armed Forces and freed black individuals from the Jim Crow laws. The reason why we focused on this particular group is because Mrs. Parks, uh, she actually worked on Maxwell Air Force Base as a seamstress and Mrs. Parks enjoyed working on Maxwell Air Force Base. Franklin says that when Rosa Parks left Maxwell Air Force Base each day, she had to deal with segregation within the city limits of Montgomery while on the city buses. Two very different experiences, all within the same city. And those experiences translated also to the experience of uh, soldiers who were um, part of the U.S. Armed Forces. So we focus on the Air Force uh, in this exhibit, but uh, it talks generally about the experience of, of all African Americans. The Rosa Parks Museum partnered with Maxwell Air Force Base's historic office, the Tuskegee Airmen, and the Alabama Department of Archives and History, all who donated historical items specifically for the exhibit. We partnered with them to develop this exhibit and uh, they also loaned us materials uh, for the exhibit that we use. It's a really uh, cool way to learn about uh, how they were able to overcome segregation and still uh, with bravery serve their country. The exhibit will run through January 2nd of 2018 and is available for free viewing. In Montgomery, Justin Walker, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The exhibit is available for viewing Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Rosa Parks Library and Museum on Troy's Montgomery campus. Now, the latest in Trojan sports on Troy Trojan Vision News. Good evening and welcome to Trojan Vision Sports. I'm Antonio Reese. Throwing things over to the gridiron, the Trojans are still riding the wave of being Coastal Belt Conference champions alongside the Appalachian State Mountaineers. However, the team looks ahead to notching another bowl win under its belt. The Trojans are set to play in the New Orleans Bowl against the University of North Texas Mean Green in New Orleans, Louisiana on December 16th. However, this is not the first time the two teams have faced off against one another. North Texas, being a former member of the Sun Belt Conference, has faced the Trojans over 10 times with the record being 8-2 in favor of the Trojans, with the team splitting their last two meetings. Coach Brown reflects on Troy's history with North Texas. Playing against a very good North Texas team, you know, Conference USA Western Division champions. Uh, only team they lost to in the conference was FAU. And FAU has arguably one of the top two or three offenses in the country, maybe number one in the country. And um, they're an old Sun Belt rival. Once again, the Trojans are set to face off against the Mean Green of North Texas December 16th at noon. For those that will not be attending the game, it will be televised on ESPN. The Trojans indoor track and field teams wrapped up their first competition of the 2018 season where they finished second at the BSC Indoor Icebreaker this past Friday. Both teams had notable stats as the women's team scored 69 points on their way to a second place finish, while the men were runners up in their division with 70.5 points. Overall, the Trojans had 27 top 5 finishes and 42 top 10 in the 29 events that made up the meet. Those finishes were highlighted by 5 event victories. Tonight, the men's basketball team will put their three-game winning streak on the line as they welcome in rival UAB for their final home non-conference game of this season. The Trojans are coming off a strong win against the Hornets of UIC and have about six days to prepare to take on the Blazers tonight. This is not the first time the two teams have met. Last, last year's matchup saw the Trojans suffering their worst loss of their championship season by losing 74-51. Head coach Philip Cunningham says the team will have to try and find a way to keep up with the Blazers. I've always... Uh always thought of UAB as a, a, a really strong traditional program, and they are. They're a really good team right now. Uh, they've got a bunch of veteran players on that team, and, uh, and they've, had, they've had our number. And, and, and uh, we've got to figure out a way to, uh, to, try to try to be in the game with them. And, and uh, it, it, it'll be interesting from our standpoint to see what you know, happens with Jordan. Obviously, he makes us a, a lot better team. The game is scheduled to tip off from Trojan Arena at 7 p.m. and will be available to watch on ESPN3 and listen to on the Troy Radio Sports Network. Bouncing over to the women's courts, the Trojans are coming off a nail-biting win against the Jacksonville Dolphins and are now preparing to take on the Volunteers of Tennessee. The Trojans are looking to come out with a victory this time around as they travel up to Knoxville, Tennessee. The last matchup saw the Volunteers beating the Trojans 110-84. 
Coach Rigby credits that with this past win against Jacksonville, her team will have all the momentum going into practice and leading into the upcoming matchup against the Bulls. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a battle, but we're coming for them, and we're going to take them down. Tennessee, no doubt, has the best team they've had in many years. Um, they're undefeated. They played some really good teams. They're playing great basketball. They have the number one recruiting class in the nation. They're depending. They're having some freshmen step up and do big things. And so we have our work cut out for us. But uh, I'm glad we got the win tonight to give us that momentum to get us right for practice, to get us in the right spirit at practice, to do all we can to go up there and defeat them. The Trojans will tip off in Knoxville, Tennessee, tomorrow night at 6 p.m. The game will be televised on the SEC Network and will also be broadcasted on WTBF Radio.